Hi guys, my name is Kevin. I've been working on a South Bend lathe, 15 inch swing, six foot bed. This is part three. In part one, I talked about going up and getting it. In part two, we made a mess of the lawn, getting it unloaded. And now we're gonna get into the actual working on the lathe, getting off some of the old paint and that stuff. So come along, I'd like to show you. As I showed before, it's all in parts, but I am making progress. Let me catch you up and show you how we got uh, this far. As a quick catch up, here's a photo of the lathe from the auction site. The lathe on my trailer just getting back from Connecticut and here it is on a dolly in my garage. Now, while I show some pictures of the lathe as it originally was with all the peeling paint, I wanna talk about how I got the lathe down to my shop because I didn't catch that on camera. I essentially took it to its major parts I took off the carriage, the tailstock, then the headstock, the ways, and then I was left with the pedestal and the tail legs. I was able to put those on just a plain old trailer uh, with pickup and we caught the ground when it was dry and were able to back down there and get it off with an engine hoist. I started working on this pedestal. I wanted to get all that old paint off and take it all the way down to the original casting. The inside of this thing was just completely filthy. However many years of grime, I don't think it's ever been cleaned. Well, I've been working on this pedestal, taking the paint off. I'm gonna flip it over to do the bottom side. I really wanted to get the internal part out, but there's a shaft that goes through. Um, it's through there or somewhere in there, and it goes through it to support that. And here is the other side. There's a retaining set screw right inside. I took that out and then I, I used like a wooden uh, block to try to drive this and it wasn't moving and I didn't really want to hammer on it too hard. That's one issue. The second issue is that it's suspended with this uh, elevator. And to get that off, there's a, a taper pin, and I can't get that out either. So I'm just gonna clean it with a brush and get it as, as clean as I can in there and call that good. Got the pedestal completely flipped. So I think I can get it from here. This is the kind of grime that it's all filled with. And I wanna talk about how this shaft is held in here. I was gonna leave it in there, but when I turned it on its side, I had taken out the retaining nut, so then the, actually the whole thing shifted. So let me see if I can get in here and show you. All right, first of all, this right here is a retaining nut that keeps that shaft from sliding back and forth. So when I turned it on its side, the whole thing, this whole motor spindle unit slid to the left so i thought great and i started using a wood block to drive that shaft out and it went for a bit and then it stopped and i figured out now why it stopped and that is because this is the the one side if you can see my screwdriver there that's where the retaining nut is then this is part of the mounting bracket for the shelf then this right here is a retaining sleeve and it's got an Allen, Allen wrench in it. So I think if I get that loosened up, then the shaft will be able to slide out. You can already see that has come out some of this ways and it'll come out right through this access hole. All right, well, I've got it out. I think that may be a Babbitt bearing or Babbitt bushing. And there's, let's see if I can get the other one. There's the other one. Here is the where the belt comes in. Um, motor connects to this, and then this belt goes up to the main spindle. And this is where that shaft went through. There's the shaft. There was an indent where the sleeve and um, good sized set screw went in there. All right, I think I'm gonna clean out the 
rest of the inside there a little bit and then I'll flip it over and uh, get the rest of the paint off the outside. One other thing to mention, I had said before I was having difficulty I couldn't get this lifter unit separated from the handle because I couldn't get that, um, that taper pin out. But it turned out that there's a set screw here and that goes in there into a um, detent or in indention. And then that goes through, that goes through this. Um, and that's how it can rotate. So by taking out that set screw, I was unable to wiggle that out and then get the parts separated. So I'm gonna show some pics here of the progress of getting all that paint off with a wire wheel. This is old paint and it very likely is all lead based. So if anyone's doing this on their own, they really need to make uh, appropriate precautions. Lead poisoning can affect the, your blood production and if your levels get high enough, can even cause some uh, renal damage. So you need to make sure you got adequate ventilation and respiratory protection. So here I have really three phases of work on this. And it's like that just because it's difficult to get it flipped over. Here's the original paint. And then underneath it, you can see that green, which is their either Bondo or uh, it's the smoothing, smoothing agent. Then here I've taken it off and then here's a first coat of uh, enamel primer. So you can see that the surface, this is after I've wire brushed it, is pretty rough. I think this was came in two pieces. They cast it in two pieces and then I guess welded it together or not sure exactly how, I probably welded it. circles on this pedestal. I'm trying to make it look smooth. These things are made with a rough casting, which means that they make a mold in sand and it's just got roughness. So I have been hoping that if I just put on a thick enamel primer that it would help smooth it out. But I think of this as like having hills and valleys. And when I would put the enamel on and then I would start sanding, it's just too much difference between the hills and the valleys. So then I decided I would go after it with a um, rotary sander like this. That's good at taking off material, but um, it tends to make oh, in like lines just because on the curvature where it, where it touches the most. So then I was doing this uh, power orbital sander, which is so-so. Um, doesn't seem like it removes as much material, though it's better, I think, because it's a wider area. So every place here that there is still uh, material is still a low spot. So, I mean, I could try going back now and again putting on another thick coat of enamel 
and see if that would make up the difference that I could make it smooth. But you know, like for example, right there, there's still a, a significant divot. Here, there's quite a difference between this high spot and that low spot, you know, so. I'm thinking um, what I'm gonna try to do is what something I did on the, on the legs, which is to take Bondo and mix it with epoxy resin and put it hardener for both and then just have it li liquefied enough that I can put it on like a paint and then come back and and sand it off and I think that that will fill in these thick area these the low spots enough although it does involve a whole lot more work <laughs> of this liquefied Bondo. It's getting a little bit thick, so I put some acetone in it um, just to kind of get it back to what I thought was supposed to be the consistency. About like that, and it's too thin. Now I'm using this epoxy resin. Using a uh, a one dollar throwaway brush. Okay, so I've just finished putting it all on. That's what it looks like. It makes a bloody mess because it's drippy everywhere and sticky. And I'm hoping that there's enough thickness on there that when I come back and sand it, that I can make something that's nice and smooth. Obviously, there's still a lot of differences between the height and the it's the highest and the lowest points. I'll give that a day or two to dry and hope I got all my hardener ratios right. Okay, my peanut butter and honey mixture has hardened. I've already just uh, started hitting a little bit with a, a belt sander. And let's see if we can get this baby smoothed off. sanded. You can see I had a fan there blowing it out. I'm pretty happy with it. There's a couple spots. One is right there. I'm going to hit that. That's where the castings were joined. And I still have a low spot. And on the other side, I have a similar low spot. I'm sure that there's a better way to do this. Um, 
probably people that work with Bondo probably rolling their eyes or could roll their eyes at this. Um, I just didn't know a better way. It seemed like it should have been just put on smoothly and smeared, kind of like you would do uh, mud for sheetrocking. But at least the way I have it, it's so sticky and it doesn't spread and I couldn't get it to do that. So I'm having to do, you know, put it on and then sand it off, which puts all that all over the floor and everywhere. But I think in the end it's gonna come out looking nice and smooth. So I'm pretty happy with that. Well, I went back and filled in these low spots and I took this hole, made it have a sharp corner supposed to be an excess hole for that shaft. I think I'm ready to try putting some primer on it again. How many times is this now? But I think each time I do it, I think it gets better. It's actually very smooth all over now. I'm hoping it's kind of a nice finish. I got a electric sprayer <clears throat> that I've not used before. Try running that just a little bit, maybe with some water or something. And if I get brave, I may actually try to put on a coat um, using a two-part primer with a hardener. And stuff always kind of scares me because it's like you got to mix it up and then you got to get it in with a certain period of time. And I'm sure I'm probably overreacting, but it's a little bit new to me. adventure that I'll go down to full squeeze to put some down in here this tip fell off the entire hardener went into there so I've had to now mix up the entire can which is 16 ounces um, that full can is like 30 bucks so I hope I can get this all sprayed on <music> about it it's a very thick primer like really spatters on and on this side it's not too bad and on this side it's not too bad but maybe it's because I couldn't see what I was doing as well here but I got it on too thick and it started running terribly so then they tried hitting it with that little roller which then gave it a very funky look so I think I'm just gonna have to um, leave it like that and then lightly sand it and um, and I think I'm just I'm probably gonna do rolled on I mean I hand paint um, enamel over top of it I'm obviously not very skilled with a sprayer all right let's look at this again um, it would be silly for me to compare myself to professional painters um, this is a hobby for me, and I'm learning as I go along. So the positive uh, elements from today is got to try out this electric sprayer, which I think does well. I think if I had a thinner paint that wasn't so spattering, I think I could have gotten a lot smoother. I think I needed better illumination so I could see what I'm doing and not be under this time pressure to try to get it all out. Um, and that made me put too much on. So I think that's a less good lesson learned. So I think I can put, you know, a light sand on that. I think it's gonna look nice. Already it's got a nice finish on it. I think if I sand that with some fine grit paper, and then by the time I put my uh, final coat on there, I think it's gonna be looking very good, especially compared to the rough casting and all the peeling paint it was when I started, so. So things are moving forward, it's, a, it's positive. I also, in looking at this more, I think one of the, uh, the issues was with that blower, 
I think there's a certain distance you're supposed to be apart away from it. And I think because I couldn't see, I was getting closer. And then it's not just a matter of how much paint it puts on, but it's actually the air, the flow the flow of air. And I think the flow of air was making it all ripple. Whereas when I was over here, because I was had more room to work or because I could see, I, I was back farther. So here's my pedestal in the light of day. I had some red spray paint I put in there. I'll probably come back with that safety red and coat over it. Um, a lot of ripples that I'm gonna take off, but because it went on so thick, it's still just a little tacky, so I'm gonna give it another day before I sand it. Back to more sanding. I think you can see. I've taken off down here. Still got to do this part here. And I did this side. I don't necessarily really like sanding and it seems like I've done it far too many times on this part, but that's part of the learning process. So uh, we're gonna get it and it's gonna look nice and smooth and um, making good progress. morning out. Very brisk. I am finally done. And I can tell you that this is as smooth as the proverbial baby's bottom. I don't think it's ever been that smooth, even when it came out of the factory. So, I'm going to try to get a coat of paint onto it. It's beautiful out this morning. As I've been standing here, there's been uh, five squirrels that keep running back and forth. I don't think they're showing up, but I can see them over in the trees over there jumping around. They're just like all chasing each other. It's just gorgeous. say I'm very happy with how this looks right now. That's a high gloss enamel and I'll be possibly putting a second coat on and then I'll be putting a clear coat over it. Oh, if I saw it, but just see I missed a spot. Let me get that in a minute here. But I think that looks fantastic. 
Very happy. All that sanding's worth it. Also touched up um, some of the red inside for some spots I've missed. Putting that light in there really helped me find the spots. I think it looks pretty cool. Okay guys, that was sure a heck of a lot of sanding and then painting and then sanding and then coating and then sanding, but I think the end result was worth it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. There's going to be some more videos coming out in this series, and I hope you had a good time, and thanks for watching.